Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Welcome to my home studio. Today, we're checking out the first standalone digital converter from Rupert Neve Designs. Let's get started. <laughs> Today we're checking out the Master Bus Converter from Rupert Neve Designs, the company's first standalone analog to digital converter. The MBC or the Master Bus Converter actually has a history that reaches back a couple of years. In 2018, Rupert Neve Designs introduced the RMP D8. This is a Dante compatible 8 channel remote controllable preamp. And with that Dante connectivity, it had built in analog to digital conversion. And what Rupert Neve Designs noticed is that engineers were starting to use that actually just as a converter. So they took that same converter approach, enhanced it even more. And now we have the master bus converter. But this is a lot more than just a two-channel analog to digital converter. It has a lot of versatility that makes it useful for tracking, for mixing, for mastering, for broadcast and streaming. It's an all-purpose two-channel converter that will serve you well in a lot of applications. Now, there are a couple interesting features here. We'll go through those in more detail later. But to give you a quick rundown, this is actually a dual-path converter. That means that we have two different ways the signal can come in. The first of these is an ultra-pristine Class A transformerless path. It's ideal for when you want to capture a signal with no coloration from the converter. For the other path, we can insert an inner stage transformer into the signal path, and that'll, of course, add a little bit more weight, a little bit more girth to the signal, some saturation as well. And then we have Rupert Neve Design's proprietary silk function. This allows us to add upper, mid, and high harmonics or lower harmonics to enhance the signal. So we have a lot of flexibility for shaping the sound with that second path. In addition to this, we have an analog limiter in the MBC. But this being Rupert Neve Design's, of course, it's not your standard limiter. They call this a compound active release limiter. It operates entirely in the analog domain, but it's sort of watching the signal and adapting the release so that you're getting the best performance out of the limiter. And you can control the amount of that release using this knob here. The MBC can operate either linked in stereo or you can use it as two separate mono converters and we have separate controls for each of the channels in that case. We have two inputs on the back panel and then we have three digital output formats. We have SPDIF on RCA or coax, and then we have TOSLINK for optical and we have AES on XLR. Now all three of these can function simultaneously. The MBC supports sample rates up to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz, and we can scale the meters using a button right here on the front panel, the ADC Cal, to go anywhere from minus 14 dB full scale to minus 20 dB full scale. So it's very easy to integrate this precisely into the rest of your gear. Another feature on the back panel is that we have word clock in and out. The clock in the MBC is extremely low jitter and extremely high precision, but you can also clock it to an external clock if you like. As I mentioned, on the front panel, we have separate controls for the two channels. We have channel A and channel B, and the controls are identical. And in fact, all four of these controls are dedicated to the limiter. So we have a threshold for the limiter here. We have the release here, that compound active release control here. And then we have a gain control. Now, you might think this is a makeup gain control, as you'd find on a traditional limiter. But the MBC, that gain control is actually used to drive harder into the limiter. This allows us to have 20 dB, a very clean gain, that we can use to push that limiter even harder to saturate things and to increase the drive. A very nice feature for mixing and mastering is the side chain for the limiter. The frequency for this is controllable with this knob and it ranges from 20 hertz to 250 hertz. As you'll hear when I demonstrate this, this really allows you to shape the balance between the low frequencies and the high frequencies. Those low frequencies have a lot more energy they're gonna to tend to trigger the limiter. So by filtering some of those with the side chain, we control the impact of that low frequency and you'll hear that the highs and the mids actually come up when we do that. Rounding out the controls, we have bypass for the limiter. We have stereo link on and off. Here's where we engage the transformer. And this is our silk control. And there are three different modes here. There's off, red, which adds more harmonics in the upper mids and the highs, and blue, which adds more low frequency harmonics. And we can control the amount of that with the texture control. So let's turn everything off and run some music through the MBC so you can hear what all these functions do. With everything bypassed, we get that ultra pristine class A transformerless signal path. Let's listen to that. It's very clean, it's uncolored, very transparent, and basically a natural reproduction of everything that's going into the MBC. Now I'm going to link the two channels and engage the limiter. So this is very useful for maximizing your level, but it's also useful 
for setting a hard barrier at the top so you don't have clipping when you're tracking, especially in live situations or in broadcast or streaming situations. With the limiter set like this, it's a nice transparent analog limiter. Brings things together, controls the levels, but it isn't adding a ton of coloration. But we can start to shape that. First of all, we can drive things a little bit harder. So in this case, we're pushing a little harder into that limiter. You can see we were getting more limiting. We've got an eight stage meter here that shows gain reduction. And we also have a very precise 22 stage LED meter to show us our input level. Now let's check out that side chain. Now I've had it bypassed so far, but if we engage that, let's turn it all the way down. Now as the music's playing, I'll do my best to turn up the two channels at the same time so you can hear what happens as that shift goes from the low end toward the mids and the highs. <laughs> You can hear as we change the frequency on that side chain, it's changing the impact of those low frequencies on the overall balance, how the limiter is affecting the overall balance. As we turn that up, the mids and the highs start to come out more. So it's a great way to balance out your mix. Now I like this set somewhere around the 12 o'clock position for most music because it controls the impact of those very, very low frequencies that have so much energy, but it still allows the bass, the upper bass and so on to get through freely and to impact that limiter. Now I'll turn on the transformer. What you're gonna hear is a bit of added weight bit of added girth, a bit of added punch. It's a subtle effect, but it gives you that classic transformer effect on your signal. Now we'll engage the silk control, and I'll step between having it bypassed, the red, and the blue versions. Now I've got the texture cranked all the way up, so we're really overemphasizing those harmonics a bit, but you'll be able to clearly hear the effect. <laughs> this mix, I really like the red silk effect. It really seems to bring the mix to life, really makes it jump out of the speakers. We haven't talked much about specs with the MBC, and that's because it's a Rupert Neve design product. So you can expect that it's going to have top quality components, and it certainly does. But one of those specs that really impressed me was on that transformerless signal path. We have frequency response from 20 hertz to 70, 70 kilohertz, and the frequency response deviates from flat by only 0 0.025 dB. That's amazingly flat over that wide of a range. When we engage the transformer, we're still flat, and we still have response that's flat within 0.1 dB. Amazing specs. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Rupert Neve Designs Master Bus Converter. I've really enjoyed working with it. It's a super versatile converter, great for tracking, for mixing, for mastering, broadcast, streaming, whatever you're doing, whenever you need to convert from analog to digital, it makes a great solution. Thanks for joining me here in my home studio. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.